Well, hello, and welcome back to Beta Flight Basics, where this time we're going to cover the ports tab, and more importantly, why you need to know the small bits about them. Good news, it's not a big subject, and we can get through it quite quickly. So let's go over to Beta Flight here on the screen and connect back to our flight controller. Now, I say it's the ports tab, I realize there's the setup tab here, which um, I wasn't going to cover, but since we're here, the only thing really to look at, aside from the, the backup and restore, is if you're going to use self-level mode, brackets, don't use self-level mode, and if your craft looks like that when it's on a flat surface, then make sure it's flat and stable and click the calibrate accelerometer. You should see it come back to level, um, and then you're, you're good to go. But anyway, let's move on, shall we, for the exciting moment of the ports tab. So the ports tab talks about um, UART port. What is a UART port? UART stands for Universal Asynchronous Receiver Transmitter. Complex wording, but all it means is it's a port that can send and receive data. And what's a UART port look like? Most of the time, like on this a slightly knackered um, F3 SP Racing board, they're nicely labeled. I'll show you a close up. They all have a ground, five volts, an RX, and a TX pin, and that's what they've got in common. In the early days, you only had like a couple of these ports. Nowadays, you can get sort of four or five quite happily and do lots with them. The important thing about this tab is this thing here that says MSP. Now, MSP stands for multi Wii Serial Protocol, which really demonstrates the hierarchy of where um, Betaflight has come from. Way back when, in the, I say way back when, it's like six years ago. Um, people found the multi-Wii controller literally from the Wii games console and said, oh, that's got a really good accelerometer and gyro in there. We can rip it out and make it into a flight controller. And they did. And that's how people built flight controllers in the early days. The code from that was ported over to this sort of chipset originally into base flight and then clean flight and then beta flight. But th some of the core stuff has stayed in there, MSP being one of them. The reason MSP is so important, and it says it here, do not disable. <laughs> is because MSP is the protocol that's used to talk between your computer and the flight controller. If you were to disable it and then save and reboot the controller, you'd have no way of going back and ever talking to it again. And you'd have to reflash the firmware. So always, always um, have at least one MSP. And it's usually UART1. On some controllers, like um, on this little Aurora I've just got, it will have this port called USB VCP, which means virtual COM port, which means it's using a dedicated uh, COM port for the USB, which isn't taking up one of the UART ports. This is only relevant if you've got a very small number of UART ports and you're using them for something else. For example, on some of my quads, um, UART 1 is shared between the USB and my um, OSD because they use the same protocol. They both talk to each other on MSP. and if I plug into the USB controller without unplugging the OSD, then we find both of them are trying to talk at the same time and we get bad comms. So only be aware of that if you know you're using an OSD and it's sharing the same port. Otherwise, you're fine. That is pretty much that column done. The next column is Serial RX. What is Serial RX? So if we enable Serial RX on one of these UARTs, it means, generally speaking, we want to talk SBUS or some sort of um, Serial-like provider. There are various types of SBUS. A lot of people use these FreeSky receivers and that speaks SBUS. And we talk about the type of SBUS it uses on the configuration tab, which we'll be looking at next time. But that's the only thing to think about on Serial RX. If you're using traditional one servo lead per wire, don't do that. Then you don't need to do anything. If you're using uh, CPPM, then you also don't need to do it. For 99% of people, those are what you're using, and the other ones I'm just including as kind of reference here. But if you were gonna use one of them, perhaps telemetry would be the next one. So on this column, we've got telemetry output. So you've got the option to talk um, a specific telemetry protocol in order to get data back to your radio to understand what's going on on your quad. So a very common one here is the smart port the smart port is the modern port as built in. This is um, a FreeSky X4RSB, which has the um, outside stripped. But the S port is this little thing here, which has got um, another data pin on it. So you can 
basically enable this for SmartPort. This this one's just a board rate, by the way. Um, and then configure it to send data back to your radio and pick up stuff like the voltage and other bits you might have. So on an earlier quad, I used to use um, a, a different sort of um, FreeSky protocol before the smart ports, which would send back the voltage to my radio and then I'd set up the Tyrannis to tell me when the cells drop below a certain amount and then it could alert me on the radio. These days I tend to use an OSD or the integrated beeper on the flight control itself in order to tell me what's happening, but mainly you kind of know anyway because if you've flown it enough times you'll know exactly how much time you can get out of flying and, and you'll be fairly aware of it. But depending on the kind of sensors you have on board, like if you had a GPS you could send GPS coordinates back for example, um, you can get a lot from it. Uh, I don't think it's that much of a common option these days. Going over to the next column on sensor inputs, uh, I touched on it before, you could have a GPS, you can have uh, ESC uh, input coming on. I think the KISS ESC is one of the things that sends uh, ESC telemetry data on. Um, I've never used it and I tend not to put GPS's on these tiny little quads but of course people um, flying flight controllers on, on larger quads might do this for position hold and stuff like that. Finally, uh, the peripherals column. Never used it. Um, one of the common ones is black box logging. This is if you've got a separate a data recorder to log your black box information. But uh, a more interesting one lately is the sort of smart VTXs like the TBS Udify and the IRC Tramp. Now these have uh, basically a two-way communication protocol and there's many ways because they've been set up to racing you can sort of wave ones over them and set them up. But you can also set up an LUA script on the Tyrannus using the two-way um, transmission on a UART port to talk directly to one of these uh, VTXs to set the channel and the power and to work out what it is so you can set all that via your radio which is quite exciting. Not tried it because I don't own any of these but for for guys in racing I guess this is very useful. It's a bit new and exciting but I would say in terms of your normal setup you're looking at these first two columns one of which you're not going to touch the MSP and it's pretty much just a case of if you're going to use SBUS then you'll need a UART that is in serial RX and you need to know which one that is so you actually set up the right one. That's about it for port tab. Quite short because there's not much there but next time a little bit more involved where we go to the configuration tab and if we've set up SBUS as a UART we then look at where we set that up um, in the configuration menu to make sure we've got the right type of uh, serial provider. And there's some more things about ESC setups and um, gyro rates and things. So join me for that one next time. Bye for now.